on this episode of Madco Fabs, I'm going to show you what I've been up to since the Christmas break. Because I have been a little busy traveling and whatnot, but I have done a couple things off camera. Partially because I just sometimes don't grab the damn camera. Some of the things we need to do really quick. Shout out to this company right here, Affordable Bender. Helps get you started and moving around. A couple things I want to show you. My fuel system. I started running that. Looking great. Going good. And we started on roll bars. The garage is a mess because I didn't grab the camera yesterday and show you what the hell I was doing. Because like I said, I am bad about it. But this episode of Madco Fabs starts now and hope you enjoy. So I've done some small things for my fuel system. I've gotten some things in stock and whatnot. I haven't started to run a whole lot. Like as far as my fuel line from back to front and from my fuel filter or fuel the from my fuel cell to my fuel filters, I haven't started running the lines. All I've been doing is collecting and trying to figure out what path I want to take. Because to be quite honest with you guys, so I've got some stuff over at the truck I will show you as far as my pre-filter, my uh, fuel pump, and then my post-filter. My pre-filter is 30 micron, my fuel pump, and then I go into a pre-filter or post-filter. Damn, English. I go into a post-filter that is 100 micron. I haven't started running my AN lines or anything like that. All I've been doing in the last three weeks is trying to collect things to show you guys so we can make steady video, so I can make steady movement forward on the truck and cut good videos. So today's video isn't gonna have a whole lot of me working, it's just gonna show you guys what I've been doing, what I've been ordering, what's been going on. So for example, my AN fuel line. Was stoked about that, extra holder because I didn't end up using it. So I had to order all my AN fittings I had to get everything in so that way when I do go to cut a video on fuel system, I can make that video all one time. Showing what I've done, what I haven't done. Something, you guys, if you've seen AN fittings, you've seen them before. They're just 90s and couplers. I do want to show you all this right here. This is sick. So this is a 6AN female and a 6AN female on the other side. So I could take two like uh, I put on my fuel pump, and I'll show you here in a second, on my fuel pump I did a six out, and I did on my fuel filter a six out. That way I can just screw these two together and I won't have any AN fuel line on the in-between. So if I need to pull that system, if I need to pull my pre-filter, my fuel pump, and my post-filter, I can pull that whole system as one whole unit and pull it out, kind of like a fuel rail. Uh, I'm just trying to make ease of work for necessarily power tours, things like that. Guys, it is a drift truck. It's kind of changed a little bit since I started. <laughs> it was originally gonna be just all drift, but now I'm thinking some crazy shit because I'm having fun building it, and that's just what happens. So with that, like I said, some of the things that I'm thinking now are uh, ease of working on, ease of getting things in different places and doing things. So. Another thing that I had to get my hands on was a fuel regulator kit, fuel pressure. This just regulates the pressure going into the motor because your fuel pump can produce, you know, 90 pounds. You will blow your shit up, so you have to regulate that pressure. It comes with its own 6A and female, male, 90s, things like that. I like it. Now, this is the part where most people get pissy. And I don't give a shit. You guys know how I am. Get pissy, throw a fit, I don't care. I ordered everything off eBay and I went with the cheapest suppliers. Not the cheapest suppliers, I went with cheaper suppliers. Uh, I did do a little research on some of my companies that I picked with and some of them I just didn't give a shit. My fuel pump is through uh, Evil Energy. That's a decent, retributable company that I've heard of. I've, I've seen their stuff before. But other things like my AM fuel line, I, I didn't find a great company, you guys. I didn't go through and search for the best damn AN manufacturers of each one. If you want to go that far, go for it. 
I'm not. If it doesn't work or I can't get one to seal, then I'll order through another manufacturer and be done with it. And to be honest with you guys, I mean, look at this. I've got just fittings for days. A lot of them might came with what I ordered, but you know, whatever. 90s, 45s, use all kinds of stuff. So that's something I wanted to show you right quick. And now we'll move over to the truck and I can show you what I have done to the truck. Oh, over there I was talking about how I want to make this all one piece. You guys, this is my pre-filter at 30 micron. Shit, can you even see that? Look at This is my pre-filter at 30 micron. This is my fuel pump. This is my post-filter at 100 micron. You guys, look at that. It's all one assembly. I can pick it up all at one piece. I mean, that's just damn cool. So one of the things that I need to show you guys is me mounting this fuel rail and getting it all in place and uh, running my AN lines, things like that. But I mean, just look at that. And then you just like normal. Well, we'll take the fuel, fuel, fuel filter off. So you just break everything down. I mean, I'll have all that sealed and in place. It'll just be not a pain in the ass for me to work on. If I have a leak somewhere or I've developed a problem, I can just move through it. And like I said, evil energy on my fuel pumps. Uh, a lot of you guys might give me shit for this, but sometimes I order a brand because I like their stickers. I put a hole in this base plate that holds our fuel cell and all of our assembly, our fuel pump and every way. This is gonna run a fuel line down underneath and go forward. If you can see those three lines down there, these right here, that's the original fuel lines or original fuel line going to and then uh, the other two are vent and back, the return line. So, you know, pretty much same concept, but that's what I've been, you know, dickering around with since you guys last saw the channel like i said i get we had a lot of family things to do and obviously it's christmas you guys i know some families don't have families <laughs> i know some people don't have families so they're not traveling i know that people you know still have crisis and things happen to them but fortunately enough and thank god i have the ability to travel and talk to my family so i've been working on that now let's get to what i was doing last night First, I want to talk about affordable bender. I know this is a lot of talking, but I want to talk about affordable bender. This bender is just, you know, a hydraulic jack on a die. I'm running an inch and a half. There's not a whole lot you can say about it, you guys. This will do, I think, from inch and a quarter all the way up to two inch, I think is what I can get this in. I forget. You can get on their website, look at it. But let me tell you, I was thinking about buying a Rogue Fab and I still am considering buying a Rogue Fab. I don't have a lot of money, you guys. I don't want to tell you where I work because I just don't want you to know where I work because I don't want any problems in case my channel ever blows up. Probably won't. <laughs> but at the time, I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have the ability to go buy a big expensive bender and I wanted to buy a Rogue Fab. I wanted to be able to have hydraulic bending. I wanted to be able to produce pipe quickly. And my customer base is as I'm growing my company or my business name, Madco Fabs, I might still end up buying a affordable bender and moving on to being able to bend pipe quicker, 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 quicker. I might be able to buy one or move buy one moving forward so I could bend pipe quicker. I can do more. But for right now, I want to work the way I am, slowly, methodically, get used to what I'm doing, learn how to do what I'm doing correctly, get a feel for it before I moved on any further. The price range on this is what gave me the ability to do that. Now, did I have to buy a tube notcher through affordable bender no you guys not at all i did not 
Why did I buy a tube notcher through a affordable vendor? Dude, I love this tube notcher. It's like, it's just the most clean, robust design that I could find. And hell, I, I just, I liked it. I just like the way it looks. Sometimes, well, not all, sometimes it's a lot. You guys know how I am. Aesthetics are a big thing to me. So, I started bending roll bars. I started getting around and doing, just kind of getting a feel for it. The reason I didn't video any of this is it was, it was a lot of tedious work because it was my first couple times bending pipe for roll bar. I've done exhaust systems, I've done things like that, but I've never bent roll bar pipe. And I didn't want to sit on camera and say, okay, well, you're going to want to go two degrees. You're going to want to do this. You're going to want to do that. I didn't want to put any dumbass information out there where it's just completely off and nobody has any idea what I'm talking about. I don't want anybody following that and I'd be pissed if I followed it. So. I started bending pipe myself, just getting a feel for what I'm doing. I screwed up, which is fine. Because I screwed up, I have to notch or I have to uh, connect two pieces of pipe. There's a uh, there's rules to if you're gonna like like say you're gonna run your car in the run of the lemons lemons. I said Le Mans. It's supposed to be if you're going to be running your car in the run of the lemons or you're going to take your car through a power tour or you're going to do certain things, you have to have a roll cage. Say uh, time trials or what in the hell is the name I'm trying to come up with? I can't think of it. Uh, where they go out in parking lots and Mazda Miatas and run around in a you know, tight little track. Whatever the hell. That. Anyway, if you're going to have a roll bar in your vehicle, that cage has to be inspected. And because that cage has to be inspected, you have to follow a certain set of rules. I've read the rule book on a couple different setups. Obviously, this is an NHRA drag. So because we're not doing NHRA, the rules aren't as extensive. But I recommend you guys look into the rules. You need to. You need to know what the hell you're doing and what's going on. For example, mine, because I have to splice these two together because I bit this 90 too high or this bend right here. I call them brakes. This brake was too high. I had to take, I think, four and a half inches of pipe out. Don't ask me how in the hell I got that far off, but I did. Anyway, this is per regulation on how you have to do it. I had to make a sleeve. That sleeve had to go over the outside. Uh, that sleeve had to be like half inch past the brake plus a half inch plus that. It's got to have rosette welds, which is just a fancy way of saying spot welds. Um, and it's got to be fully welded inside outside. So another thing, I had to join these two together because from that spot over here to this spot over here, that distance was gonna be longer than an eight foot chunk. So I had to use two pieces and bind them together at the top. And another spot where I had to splice it all together, you guys. What I'm getting at is if you're gonna do this, you gotta read a little bit on what you're allowed to do. It would suck nuts if you showed up to do an inspection or a race, you go through inspection and you fail and you've already spent all your money on that company. Guys, another thing that sucks ass. The reason I'm bending my own tubing is because a lot of people cannot afford to send something that they're going to daily drive and goof around on and have fun and they're just building for fun. They can't afford to go and spend the 10K on a roll cage just so they can go enjoy racing for a while. And that's why we have illegal racing because it's so damn expensive to do actual racing. So besides the point, that's where we're at with the tube bending. There is some things I'm gonna show you guys like how to make a notch um, or how to, not, how to not make a notch. How I'm gonna make, how, hell, how I make those sleeves to go over so you can splice pipe. There are some things I want to show you is like bending pipe, how to do the math on it, how I've been doing the math on it, and I figured out ways that work for me. And we're just going to move forward on that. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to get on camera because it's kind of a pain in the ass. It's tedious as hell. Like literally put one of those pipes in that bender, crank the bender down two or three times, pull that pipe back out, check that pipe, put the pipe back in. It, Dude, it's tedious. It's tedious as hell. So I, it's like, do I show you guys me working on one pipe for a whole damn day? It's one of those things where you're going to get bored as shit watching that. You know what I mean? I don't want you bored as shit because I don't want to be bored as shit. 
So today, I think what I'm going to do is uh, find the distance that I agree with for that cage or the starting of my cage back there. I'm going to move it off the truck a little bit. I think I'm going to pull my welder out and I'm just going to tack that to the frame just to hold it for me so I can start moving around and getting an idea of what I want to do. I've got some ideas, but I just don't know moving forward how I want to do it. Like I said, these all spin. They're just sitting there. I make each one of those and then eventually I'll, I'll come in and drill. Well, let's turn that one more time. I'll drill a hole here and here, fill that with weld. Let me slow down. These two pieces of pipe come together in the center. I will weld those together. They're, at, they're cut at a 30 degree angle. That way you don't have any shear value or it helps your shear value. And then I'll drill a hole here, full weld, hole here, full weld. Do the same thing on the opposite side. And then I'll come in and weld this and all this all the way around. That is per regulation. So that way my roll cage is safe. I'm probably going to fail it anyway. <laughs> but shit happens. But I'm thinking about today pulling this out, finding the distance off the cab that I want it, tacking it to the frame just so it holds it for me. Nothing spectacular, you know and setting it up so I can move forward on building the rest of this cage. This cage comes, as of right now, I wanna come out about here and dive in in front of this tire, come back and roll back. Kinda of like Exo Truck, but cooler. I'm not doing anything up front. We've got some cool shit we're gonna do up front, but not as far as roll bars. I'm not Exo in this truck. The only reason I Exo the ass in is because I wanted something different. The truck bed that was on here was perfectly fine. <laughs> it's actually the only Tacoma from that year I could find that didn't have rust. Blew my damn mind. So that's where we're at. That's what I'm doing. 